Hello everyone, welcome back to Silent Fact Entertainment. Today in new episode we will be discussing how the bank system works. With that being said, let's jump right to it. Okay, let's first start talking about the bank the history of banking. Now before the banking that we know of today, there was something called a barter system back in 2000 BC where individuals would not would actually go to a market and instead of instead of using money to purchase things, they will use what the, their resources that they have. So they were so they were they were pretty much trading. Like if I had some um some 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 if, if I had some like let's say apples, I will go there and if I needed some rice, I will give you some apples and you will have to give me some rice. And these are and these are just some, and these are just some examples right here. So it were called the barter system. Two thousand years later, the first and major way that banks make money is pretty much on your savings account and that, and, how, and how does that work you know you first go into the bank you know they tell you hey look you know we can give you a free checking account and you, you, you have to keep a certain amount on your savings account you know so you don't have to you know you can avoid the charge um, and they also will promise you a certain uh, interest rate as long as you have money in your savings account for a long time you know you will you will you increase your money pretty much now that same um, money that you're saving in that account is the same money they will use to provide loans to investors sometimes also to help out individuals get credit cards and and also to student loans and you know anything that can pretty much you know help them make more money with your money by giving a, another person an interest rate that's what they will use your money that you're saving in a bank for and that's one of their another example is uh, you know, obviously, we all know sometimes we get these uh, overdraft fees. You know, we get we get uh, maintenance fees, and also when you use another ATM that's not your bank and you're using your actual bank card, you will get a three dollar uh, you know charge because you're using someone else's uh, bank and not yours. So ATMs also make money off of you guys, and you know, and most of these banks they they made literally billions of dollars over the years. On just these fees alone so just understand that's another way they make their money also and also you know when they're providing loan ap applications to investors or someone that needs a loan for a business or whatever the case is they also um, you know they also get give those loan fees out to those individuals and that's another way they make money so these are just some examples right here guys um, but definitely um, you saving your money there and for them, and them, them making the interest of, of, of using your money is one of the biggest ways the uh, banks generate income. Okay, my favorite part now. How do you make money with the bank system? I'm going to give you guys some examples on how instead of you being used, now you can actually use it to your advantage. All right. Now, let's start with the first thing. You can pretty much invest into a bank stock. You know, you might as well own the own the bank, own a own a stock. You know, if you're gonna keep going there and using the bank, that's one way. You know, just invest into a bank stock. Another way is borrow for a business. If you have a good business plan, or you want to open up a grocery, or you want to open up, you know, um, a laundromat, like you know, some smart business decisions that you know the area may need, just go and you know. You know, just go to the bank and ask them for um, use their money. Cause one way, another way is, you know, borrow to flip a home it is buy a bank foreclosure. Now, another way too. This is kind of an old way, but hey, it still works to uh, up until now. You can go to the bank and use maybe like twenty five dollars uh, of your own money and tell them that you want to exchange that into like quarters or nickels, maybe like a hundred nickels, maybe you know, like. 1500 dimes you know as long as you know you have $25 so you just get a couple boxes of different coins and then you look for the um you look for the uh the dimes and quarters and half dollar coins that are minted before 1965 what does minted means meaning that they're actually were, were were designed and they were actually you know they, they, they were pretty much created from the Federal Reserve. Now, the at reason that why you time. want to look for those type of coins is because those coins are 90% silver. And what you can do, and guess what? Right now, those actually have more value than uh, in the coins that's after 1965. If you look right here, this is an example right here that um, someone is actually selling that coin right there for a lot of money. 
And you'll be surprised people do actually buy these coins because they know they're going to increase in value over time because you're not going to get them no, no, no more. Now, if you want to just go with a penny over the pennies now that are uh, minted before 1983. Now, those are mostly copper. You know, you can actually sell those on eBay, Amazon, and you can get back, you know, you can pretty much get back some nice amount of money. That is it. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below on what you've learned today. You guys take care of yourself. Now for a silent fact info. Two types of money games you can play. First one is playing the game of helping your government improve their economy by providing what they lack that will then give you all back in support on times of crisis. Or play the second game which is live a no risk and simple survival game and be stuck in the rat race for the rest of your life.